where that Syracuse defense is most vulnerable. He's got to make the proper reads for the entire 40 minutes, and he has to be productive scoring the basketball. Officials tonight, Ron Gruber, Ted Valentine, and Jamie Lucky. Syracuse in the road orange, Florida State in the home whites. Jesse Edwards and Cam Corrin to jump center. Sparse crowd tonight in Tallahassee. Syracuse controls the opening tip and the early basket good through the contact. Malik Brown on the fast break right off the opening tip and he is a little slow to get up. I'll tell you, that's how you start a game in terms of execution. Didn't go the way they had wanted to. Florida State won the tip so easily. Just a good read from Brown. Came down. Kind of rough, but tough guy gonna stick it out. No foul on the play. Jim Beheim pleading his case with Jamie Lucky. An early issue and a fair one. For Florida State, no Jalen Worley in the starting lineup. Disciplinary issues, internal, we're told. So Chandler Jackson, who fires that jumper, makes his first start of his career, the freshman from Memphis. The rest of the lineup for Florida State, we told you about Cleveland. Darren Green is one to watch. His shooting against the zone could be problematic for the Orange. He's one of the best three-point shooters in the ACC, hovering around 40%. He's going to get his looks. You can't just take the first one, though. That's always how you're baited against this Syracuse zone. Work, be disciplined to get great ones each time down. Joe Girard is Syracuse's leading scorer. Judah Mintz, the freshman point guard, leading the team in steals, leading the conference in steals. And Malik Brown has scored the first basket back in the starting lineup. He started the last three. Cleveland rebounds the miss. Here is Green, his first look on its way. No good. Cleveland to follow and the rebound by Chris Bell. The Orange have not had much rebounding from the small forward position as Green picks up the foul near midcourt. Now you'll take the three-point shot that's in transition. Defense hadn't settled. Proper offering from Green, but what is unacceptable is the foul in the backcourt. Get back, defend, live for the next play. Judah Mintz really shined down the stretch against BC on Saturday after getting benched for a spell in that game. Misfires, Jackson snares the rebound. Mintz as good as anybody in the college game of drawing the foul. You make him settle for the mid-range if it's contested, it's a win. And Cam Corrin turns it over. Corrin has started to come along for Florida State. He's been their leading scorer the last two times out but an early turnover for the freshman. Didn't think they'd have Corn in this position, but it speaks to the unexpected season that the Knowles have had to this point. He would have been their third option at the five if everybody was healthy. Injuries have taken a toll. Both of these teams play a lot of freshmen, both very young. Mintz throws it inside. Edwards with the mismatch on Mills, and that's too easy. I love the offensive approach from the Orange early. Edwards red hot coming off that BC game. Let's establish him have him with an aggressive approach early on by getting him those touches Syracuse and it's patented 2-3 zone Cleveland thought about it Jackson picked up the dribble Feet inside Cleveland blocked It's Chris Bell now Gerard with a good look, lines it up and knocks it down. He had come into this game in a 9 for 33 shooting slump, three of his last 14 from downtown, and a 7-0 run by the Orange to start. Look, if I'm FSU, the minute in warm-ups that Joe Gerard stepped onto the floor, I have awareness of what he's doing and where he's at. Miscommunication allowed an easy three-point look. Down low, too easy for Cleveland. Florida State's leading scorer. He had 15 and 10 over the weekend against Louisville. His eighth double-double in conference play. Mintz thought about it. Cleveland backs off. Catch and shoot. Bell. Rebound comes back to Malik Brown. New 20 for the Orange. How about the activity from Edwards? Mintz down low. Edwards lost it. Working against Corrin off the window too strong, and Corrin turns it over. It goes back to Syracuse. Coach Bayheim's okay with everything he's seeing from his big. 
be aggressive, be selfish down low. Corrin is a freshman. He's not used to defending a guy with that size, and right now that confidence at the big possession that, position that Edwards possesses. And quickly we see Leonard Hamilton address the lack of size on the floor for Florida State. He brings in the six foot eleven Baba Miller. He brings in the seven foot four Naheem McLeod. This is one of the biggest stories of the game. Can Edwards have production and success against a massive front line? As Bell knocks down the open 18-footer. There's options for this Q's offense. Though. Jalen Worley did not start. He's coming off one of his best games as a Seminole. In there now at point guard for Florida State. He's really started to come along as this season has progressed. McLeod left it short. Rebound to track down by Cleveland. Syracuse gives up a lot of offensive rebounds. Now it's green. There's another offensive rebound. Cleveland down low, pulls it back out. Cleveland's ability to rebound from the wing. They have to exploit that for second chance. Cleveland from the outside did not hit the rim, but there is McLeod. So early on, the influx of size into the lineup paying off for Leonard Hamilton. And as you watch Syracuse basketball all season long, look, there's a few things you can point to, but they will always need to rebound. They will always need to take care of the basketball, especially with this version of the Orange this season. Four offensive rebounds for Florida State. Gerard, a sapling amongst the Sequoias, and he gets it to Edwards, who can't finish. Edwards is rushing it. He has the size advantage over Cleveland. Can pose. He can't get you at that release point. Finish more confident. McLeod off the pinball. Jalen Worley, a 6-6 point guard, shadowing Judah Mintz. Now drives by McLeod all the way and missed the dunk. Cleveland nearly lost it. Kicks to the corner. Worley rushed the shot, left it short, and the rebound to Malik Brown. But here's the deal, Anish. Now you got to get them into pick and rolls into rotations because it'll be advantage Syracuse with their guard play. Get McLeod and PNR and take advantage like they did. Just couldn't finish the dunk. Gerard the lob, and it's too high for Malik Brown. Syracuse got off to the early 7-0 start. Florida State responding 1,000 games twice. Made some news over the last few days when Pete Thamel published an article on ESPN.com. In the article, Bayheim accused Wake Forest, Pittsburgh, and Miami of buying their teams. He also said he would call his own shot on when he would retire. He's 78 years old. And then on Monday, he had to walk back both of those comments with two apologies. Yeah, I mean, to me, what jumps out in the page with the quotes from coach with Pete Thamel was uh, just he speaks for a lot of coaches in terms of how alarming this space is currently with NIL and the lack of structure around it. That being said, coach, and he's acknowledged this, was absolutely wrong to mention programs by name and reputable coaches doing reputable things with their program. By the way, within the confines of the rules, coach cleaned that up. So to me, I'm only walking away from this with Coach Beheim speaks for a large faction of coaches that are frustrated with what's going on. And beyond that, I do think it was regrettable for him to say what we all know that it's his job and he has the ability to walk away when he wants. Well, duh, he's an icon. Everyone knows that, but you don't need to splash that in everybody's face. You're talking about a legend in Coach Beheim. He's earned that right, but I didn't like how it was executed. I'm glad that he walked some of that back. That was important. As speaking to several coaches over the last few days, all of them had a similar sentiment. There is truth in what he said. No question. The delivery and how it's said. And again, we live in the world of decorum, and there are certain things where you will ruffle feathers, and you have to deal with the aftermath as Jim Beheim did. And now look, Anish, there's frustrations for different reasons from coaches. Some of the frustration, I don't have time for it. I don't want to hear it because I disagree with it. Other frustrations which came from Coach Beheim and others who I also greatly respect, I'm aligned with their frustration. There needs to be a middle ground. There needs to be more structure around this rather than just saying, hey, the toothpaste is out of the tube 
and just figure it out. That's not the right approach. There has to be a better way. And Coach Beheim was speaking to that in frustration in regrettable form. And I'm glad he walked back the stuff he needed to. And what irks some is that Syracuse has a big money donor who is using NIL to lure recruits. And again, we bring that up as a traveling violation is called on Florida State. We bring that up. None of that stuff is under the table anymore. That is all out no. in the open. A lot of schools, not just in the ACC, but across the country are doing it. So, again, it's saying the quiet part out loud. But one thing, and this is my last on this, we can get back to basketball. Coach Mike Bray said this earlier this season. We can only complain so much. These are the rules. We as coaches live push lives. So let's figure out how to navigate this thing. Forget complaints. How about solutions? And if you don't want to be a part of this, even a legend like Coach Behan, he's done enough great. He can choose to walk away from this or continue to try to win in this. And that's the reality. Baba Miller rebounds the miss after the Benny Williams dunk. Mills missed the layup. It comes back, and it's taken by Syracuse. Benny Williams, the sophomore. It's simple for him. If he rebounds, he'll play. His minutes reflect that. Edwards down low, twisting, and McLeod the rebound. Edwards, is he's just rushing it. Compose yourself. You're 6'11". Time is on your side. Just one out of five. Mills left that one short. Mills bodies up Girard. Girard leaning in, nice up and under, and Syracuse extending to a seven point lead. Green catch and shoot. It doesn't go. Another offensive rebound. That's seven now for Florida State. Cloud. Back to Worley, and the three is good. Jalen Worley had a big game over the weekend, 14 points on six of seven shooting. Starting to come into his own for Florida State as a sophomore. Vince has the mismatch now with McLeod. Entry pass off the hands of Edwards, who's off to a rough start after a career game. Kind of go a little bit higher for that one to avoid the turnover. Otherwise, you have an easy bucket, but Syracuse doing what's necessary on the road. Runner up, North Carolina Tar Heels. Uh, this is a group that is in disarray right now. They have the personnel, but it seems like the locker room is a little disjointed given the post-game comments from Armando Baycott. Those are great young men in that locker room. I've gotten to know that program decently well. It's put up or shut up time for the Heels right now. Yeah, and how they look this weekend is going to matter. Yeah, Baycott essentially said that after the game. Hey, we want the guys that want to be here. North Carolina blown out by Wake Forest last night. Caleb Mills lines it up. And Florida State now just one for ten from three. And a foul as Bell was fighting for the rebound. And that is two on Jalen Worley. Bell finally taking it upon himself to go get that defensive rebound, trying to outlet to Gerard and spur something in the open floor. Keep in mind, Gerard got one of those open look threes with the breakdown of communication in the open floor. I think they need to try to run a little bit more. But it starts with rebound. Full court pressure now from Florida State. Chandler Jackson back in there for Worley. Jackson got the start today. Gerard picked up the dribble. Bell falling away. And the rebound comes to Green. A UCF transfer, known for his shooting prowess. Got to get somebody to the ACC logo at that mid post. That's where you collapse the defense. Cleveland needs to be that guy flashing. And that one doesn't go. Florida State now one for 11 from three. And more than half their shots have come from beyond the three-point line. That's exactly what Syracuse wants. Take the first one you see. Bell's three doesn't go. Rebound Corrin. Mills sets up to Strong. Mintz on the drive, out of control, and bailed out with a foul. 
Mintz does that as good as anybody in the conference. He's not going to fall in love with the three-point shot. He's going to push the envelope, put the onus on the official to blow that whistle because he's going to initiate contact. Through two defenders, stays right at Jackson. That's a score wired to get to the line and get free ones. Mintz, a freshman out of Oak Hill Academy, which has been quite the pipeline over the years for Syracuse. Carmelo Anthony went there. Eric Dievendorf, who is doing color tonight on the Syracuse radio broadcast. With the sublime line, my man. That's what I'm talking about. I didn't get his bar. My hair is struggling right now. Dievendorf, an Oak Hill product. And not often you see Dievendorf sitting down at the scorer's table. I'd like to see my Anish Shroff with a line. Would you get a line up? Would you do that? I mean, you got you're, great hair. You're about 11 years too late. <laughs> oh, you want the low boy in the line? Once upon a time. I need picture evidence. And we get a foul. It's on Syracuse and Mintz, his first, only the first team foul halfway through this first half. Yeah, as, I, as I'm watching 10 minutes into this game, Matthew Cleveland needs to be a little bit more aggressive, demanding the basketball at that mid post and being a decision maker. You want your best playmaker to get to that mid post. And now you see Cleveland manning it a little bit. Don't be scared to linger. Jackson in that mid post, back out to Green. And he's still without a three point shot and a foul underneath. Corrin did a great job carving out offensive rebounding space. Good anticipation with the shot going up from Jackson to carve out something, give them yet another chance here in a possession. And the three's not falling for Florida State, but the offensive rebounds have kept them within striking distance. Florida State's taking seven more shots than Syracuse. Make it eight. And first three-pointer goes for Darren Green. 41% for three on the season. 14 games in his career where he's hit at least five threes. Men strong to the bucket and a foul on the floor. You're going to see Darren Green step into this three. And a 40% shooter from beyond the arc, when he's able to get the feet set and step into it like that, he's going to feel good. He's got the shoulders squared. It was a late contest. It's advantage Knowles. Justin Taylor, five in orange, the freshman in for Syracuse. He can shoot it. Now Edwards against Corn. Edwards spinning down low, follows his miss, and gets the basket. You brought up the point earlier. He was rushing. What did you see there? He was rushed again, but at least the aggression came to the forefront for the putback. His feet are too quick. He's just, he's very fidgety. Needs to slow down. Benny Williams with his hand in the passing lane. Taylor using the screen, thought about the three, knocked down three on Saturday. And going back the other way. Look, I, before we see it, I, I think there might have been a travel from Edwards on this move. He was so sped up. Yeah, I mean, it was a travel for one because he was that sped up. But I love the big fella sticking with the play to earn himself, too. Florida State brings in Tom House looking for some more shooting. So House and Green both out there along with Corin Cleveland and the freshman Chandler Jackson. Jackson of late has seen his minutes increase. This time at the beginning of the season, eight weeks in preseason with a broken thumb. It cost him the first three games of the regular season. Jackson down the lane over Edwards and able to draw the foul. And Anish, that's a good offensive possession because the basketball moves, which makes the zone vulnerable, which provides a gap to explore. And that's exactly what you got from Jackson there to draw the foul.
Samir Torrance. Down low to Edwards. He's got the size advantage on Green. Waits for the double, kicks it out. Benny Williams, back iron. You gotta win that match. You've got a distinct height advantage, you gotta win it. As McLeod wins the matchup on the other end, seven foot four against nobody. Yeah, because you jog back after you after you don't make a scoring play in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. You casually jog back and you let a guy almost head to the ceiling beat you down the floor. Girard tried to draw the contact, could not, wanted the foul, and Florida State with a chance to take the lead. And House stepped out of bounds. You run the floor, the big fella will be rewarded. Naeem McLeod, catch, dunk finish, watch out, Edwards, business. For Florida State football and basketball, still the voice of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Boys, post a picture on IG. A legend in Tallahassee, he's taking selfies with fans. It's not real if it's not on the timeline, Gene. Handed the reins over to Jeff Colain this year, who's done a terrific yes. job at Florida State. And news out of Tallahassee today, they locked up Mike Norvell to a long-term extension, a deal that takes Norvell through 2029 after really a much anticipated, much awaited bounce back season for Florida State football. Look, Norvell bred it through 2029 as he should be. That man secured the bag in year three, built this thing up, built a culture, a winning program, uh, one that, look, you may say NIL, but I say the culture he built made guys like Jared Verse and Jordan Travis want to return. This group will be preseason top five down here in Tallahassee. I can't wait to bring our huddle crew down here and cover some football. Down low, Edwards blocked by McLeod. Uh, Naheem McLeod has been the best player on the floor in this first half. Here's Cleveland. Off the skip, and Florida State leads for the first time. The freshman Jackson in his first career start swings that thing cross court, allows Cleveland to get all his ducks in a row, square up and bang it down. Four assists for Chandler Jackson. Here comes Mintz. The long arms of Baba Miller forced him to give it up. Now Taylor, straightaway three. Knocked out of bounds by Edwards. This all starts this action getting Cleveland a three-point look from the swing pass. Look at Jackson, cross court, even had protection with the screener. So there was no chance that wasn't going to be pristine view of the rim. That's all it took for Cleveland to get something going and get a rhythm. Cleveland five points, six rebounds. More than halfway to his 12th career double-double. Now Bob Miller, the freshman from Mallorca, who oozes talent. Missed the first 16 games of the season due to a suspension for improper travel benefits. Not NCAA hoopla, really over very little. Cleveland turnaround. The rebound by Bell. But that's what Florida State wants. You got your best player about eight feet from the hoop getting a good look. That needs to be the approach moving forward. Cleveland has to hunt his and be aggressive. It's been a quiet start for Mintz. Now Gerard is picked up by House. Tend to shoot. Gerard drives, kicks, Bell for three. And the rebound by Miller, who lost it but punched out by Malik Brown. It's good defensive possession. Make Gerard a driver, contest on a jump shot, locate a block out. Good sequence on both ends for Florida State. 30 second timeout. Time Will step aside. It hasn't been the prettiest first half, but it's close. Cloud dunk finish. On the other side, McLeod has been active blocking shots. Then Jackson with the swing pass, and Cleveland rocks. I'm from Cincinnati. I actually have to retract that statement. I can't even say that confidently. It makes me feel a sort of way. You felt really inauthentic. I could yeah, feel it in your didn't place. like it. It's corny and inaccurate. Cleveland lobs it up. McLeod nearly lost it. And now it's taken away by Mintz, the leader in steals in the ACC. The lob up top, missed connection, and it belongs to Florida State. I mean, zero respect for Tom House as a defender. Just believe that Bell is just going to annihilate him. House is like, no, oh, 
Not, not, not today. Not on my watch. Tom House. I respect freshman. it. Like, no, you're not just going to dunk on me. Oh, Naheem McLeod has been dunking on everybody. A game high 10 points to go along with four rebounds for the sophomore from Philly. And this is the McLeod they've wanted to get. Now, look, the system for Florida State is typically in an ideal season with Coach Ham. Ten guys, minutes here and there. McLeod has had to play extended ones and hasn't been able to. He's earning that back, though, here tonight. Florida State has not been able to space out its rotations and its minutes like it usually does. Ten to shoot. Gerard pounds the dribble against Jackson. Kicks to the corner. Two on the shot clock. And a shot clock violation. Hema had no idea how much time was left. No one. All five guys on the floor for the orange had zero idea. Inexcusable. Meanwhile, on the other side, Naheem McLeod. How about Cleveland giving him the look? I'm just going to be 7-4. I'm going to loiter around the rim. And gonna, I'm, I'm going to allow good things to happen. And that's what you're seeing from McLeod. Miller over to Cleveland in the mid post. And that is the soft spot in the zone. Look how confident Cleveland is. It's an awkward position to catch right there and make the play. But Cleveland has that ability. They left Edwards alone on the baseline. He passed on the shot. Now Mince amongst the trees swatted. Who else? Naheem McLeod. McLeod's out there just being seven foot four. Not forcing the issue. Cleveland in midair. Kicks it out to Jackson. Back to McLeod. I get McLeod in the dunker spot. Get Cleveland back up to the mid post. There you go. There's Cleveland again. Down low, McLeod and the Thunder. It's an easy game. I'm no basketball Buddha. It's an easy game. You flash Cleveland in the mid post, let McLeod dunk it. He's. We're clear. Can't write it I up. Got it. High five. She gave him life. But his father is seven foot five. He gave him the size, and he's utilized it all game long. Put Matthew Cleveland at the mid post, inserting him at the dunker spot. He's been running the floor. He's basically simplified the game to say, look, I'm taller than everybody. I'm going to hang around the rim. Good things will happen both offensively and defensively, and they have. Now, this is a team that's been beat up in the front court this season. They brought in Jalen Ganey, a two-time defensive player of the year from Brown in the Ivy League. He's out for the season with a torn ACL. Cam Fletcher, one of their top rebounders, a Kentucky transfer. They expected big things. He's out for the season. It's pressed Cam Corn into a bigger role. Sure. Remember, Baba Millard and play early in the year. And uh, now McLeod, who's lost some minutes of late to Corin getting an opportunity and making the most of it tonight as Gerard ends the Syracuse drought with a triple. I mean, again, you're not a little hung up on Mom 5'5", five, five, Dan 7'5". That's kind of wild, right? But he's still not the tallest one in his family. That's 6'4". Six, six, uh, he's there the he tallest again. one tonight. It's the same formula. Get the ball to mid post. They're ball watching, and you just go upstairs where only McLeod can get that basketball. Now Syracuse tries it. Miller gets the block on Edwards. So if they do that again, bring it to the mid post and lob to McLeod. What's the Syracuse counter? Well, they've got to get they've got to get McLeod pushed off. He's getting too close. He's positioning himself. It's essentially post position. He's getting right there. There's the lob. That one hits the backboard. It comes to Bell. But nobody's locating McLeod. You've got to get an arm bar and body on him. Push him off that baseline. Don't allow him to inch towards the rim. Gerard bodies up his defender. Offensive rebound, Edwards. Gerard for three. Good. Joe Gerard with 11 points to lead Syracuse. And they stop play to check on Chandler Jackson.
Now with the lineup shifting, if I'm Jesse Edwards, I'm looking at a position like, okay, McLeod's out of this game. I need to be a guy that reestablishes myself. Miller's out as well. A lot of size lost for Florida State with this lineup. Now Syracuse would add, was at its best offensively when Florida State had the small lineup in. Jackson, down low, Corin, the tip in, waved off. Offensive interference. Strike call, ball was still on a cylinder. But you don't mind Cleveland being aggressive. Yeah, the one challenge for Florida State is going to be a guy like McLeod only plays about 13, 14 minutes a game. How much can you get out of him tonight? That's why you sub him at that two-minute mark. You let him ride that into the into halftime. You get that rest. You probably sit him to start the second half. Then he's re-energized. Gerard to the rim. And Joe Gerard came into this game in a shooting slump. Not tonight, 5 of 7, 13 points. The rest of the team hasn't done much. So it's plagued this group a little bit. I mean, you've never had Mintz and Gerard really on that same page and also getting it from Edwards. I mean, those three stars rarely in this season. Green hits the three. His second to triple. He's got six. Torrance, the lob for Edwards, snatches it out of the air, and this time uses his size over Green. Yeah, without any Miller or McLeod around. Yeah, a little easier. That's an easy catch and finish. There's no challenge, there's no length. Whereas the last catch down there, three guys blocked the shot. Florida State has hit its last three from deep after starting one of 13. Mills. Bingo, four threes in a row for the Seminoles, and their lead is six. It's gotta go back down low to Edwards. There's the lob, Edwards the size advantage, kicks it out. Bell's three, not there, rebound to Cleveland. That's seven boards for Cleveland. Gerard playing defensive back. Lost it out of bounds. That's a proper read from Edwards. He fielded a double team. He kicked it out to a guy who shoots about 38% from three. And Bell with a clean look. Draw a double, kick it out. That's what you want to see. Shot clock is, is off. You're going to use up everything here, and I, I'd love to see Cleveland with the ball again at that mid post. Just under 10 seconds for a second chance opportunity because they've been dominant with them. Plus nine in the rebound margin are the goals. And that's been the difference. Syracuse commits the foul. They had fouls to give. Syracuse still has one more foul to give. First one on Torrance. So Mills will inbound. Cleveland, Corin, Bell, or rather Green and Jackson on the floor. Here comes Jackson. And there is the other foul given by Torrance. 4.7 seconds to go in the half. Now you'll just play. Into the corner, Green the shot fake, fires, and it rolls out. And that's how the first half ends. Uh, really impressive move from Caleb Mills to no look that thing to get the shot from the baseline. But look, Florida State won that first half with size. Second chance, McLeod, Cleveland at the mid post did everything they needed to to establish a cushion here in the first half. Florida State, the NBA scouts in the building. And Judah Mintz is without question one of those guys they're looking at because of how he's burst on the scene in this one season. He's 0 for 3. He's got to be a little bit more aggressive hunting his to elevate this perimeter for Syracuse. Chandler Jackson comes out to begin the second half. He made his first start of the season today. Cleveland in the high post. 
And Edwards snares the rebound, his sixth. Jesse Edwards had a career high 27 Saturday against BC. Just three of 10 from the field in that first half. Edwards trying to post up against Corin. Now Mintz controls. Jackson tipped the pass, 10 to shoot. Edwards trying to fight through a double team, has it stolen away. Cleveland ahead of the pack. Missed the layup, rebound Edwards at Florida State gets back. Good job of Bell wearing 52 because his jersey got ripped, so he's not wearing his standard zero jersey. But getting back defensively huge. Offensive rebound, Edwards, and the putback is there. Green thought about the three. Now it's Corn. Face up, baseline, no. And the rebound taken away by Malik Brown, the freshman who's played major minutes the last two games since Benny Williams went to the bench. Brown has moved into the starting lineup. Here comes Mitz down the lane against Cleveland. No. Jackson. Bank shot deposit slip. Kind of came with Jordan Shrug, not quite as dramatic, but like, hey, it's three, I'll take it. His seventh three of the season. And Jackson also has done a nice job defensively on hits. Gerard from long range. Look, Jackson's getting his first start. As a freshman, Chandler Jackson's going to make it count if they're not going to respect him from three. Maybe proving why they shouldn't respect him from three, but it counts. Bank is open. Hey, he heard the highway call. Here comes Jackson. All the way. It comes to Gerard. Syracuse has had very little in transition. Gerard working on green. And it rolls in. That's where Jackson's got to develop the float game. When you got 6'11 waiting for you. Playoff two floated over the extended defense. That's where your offensive game can evolve. Corn in the high post kicks it back out. Cleveland strong drive on Edwards. And that's what Matthew Cleveland can do. Nine points, eight rebounds now for the sophomore. I mentioned those NBA scouts that are here. Inevitably, they're watching Matthew Cleveland be long. And on the baseline attack in the closeout, he absolutely showed his length to get the finish. Jackson has got a big size advantage. He's again done a nice job denying Mitz, but Edwards is able to draw the foul. It's against Cora. I love this from Cleveland. It's six foot six, prototypical wing attack and closeout play into the contact, but how he was able to contort, control his body, but look at the eyes. All the way through the finish, through some contact, that's how elite finishers are able to complete sequences, keeping their eye on the goal. What he's really added to his game this season has been the outside shot. Sure. He was not much of a shooter last year. We knew he could slash. He's improved on that aspect, and Leonard Hamilton said, He's also developing as a leader, which is a much needed ingredient for a very young team. And you needed that leadership with all the obstacles this group has faced this year. Look, the season looks entirely different if they don't have the bad luck with personnel they did to start the season. But Cleveland shoot 38% from three, and that matters as a next level guy. He's one of the top recruits in Florida State history. He's starting to look the part here. Top 30 recruit out of the state of Georgia. FSU's leading scorer in ACC play and overall. Worley back in there. Benny Williams into the game for Syracuse. Orange in that zone. There's Cleveland in that high post again. And so many options open up when you can get the ball there. And Cleveland is masterful in that slot at the mid post where the defense is most vulnerable. Catches, faces, sees he's open, composes, offers the floater. High percentage opportunity. A cloud in there for Florida State. Catch it, flip it, and reverse it, Jesse Edwards. That's exactly what Edwards did right there. I tell you what, over in central New York at a little uh, pub called Fagan's, Wednesday is flip night. <laughs> there you go. Mills launches. What is it in Tallahassee? 
Tallahassee. What's Wednesday night in Tallahassee? My wife listening says it's your hotel room. You're absolutely right. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Quick stop for dinner and then the hotel room. I think I gotta eat. This body is no accident. Here's Green, catch and release. Battle for the rebound down low. And it's blocked. Syracuse looking to push. Gerard, bounce pass. Mitz, strong, missed the dunk. Bell the follow. The basket is good and the foul. Uh, Mitz 0 for 2 on the dunks. At, at this point, maybe just lay some of these in, Mitz, to complete the play. But I love Bell not giving up on the play. And that matters here. Nice pass from Gerard, can't finish, but everybody else ball watching, not Bell, who's able to finish. Chris Bell, a terrific shooter. That's his reputation coming out of high school. They didn't really need him to rebound much in high school. Jim Beheim wants him to rebound more. And he's been a little better at that today. Yeah, these are things that are part of the growth from high school to college. You have to understand the level of athlete, physicality changes. You can't just meander in to grab rebounds. Everybody's high, gets up like that. You got to box out, you got to be physical. It's a job to rebound. And Green off the nice feed from Caleb Mills, who the last couple of times out has really done a nice job of facilitating 11 assists, just one turnover in his previous two games. Near turnover, Bell able to save it. Wearing the number 52 after his jersey ripped. And that's a nice move inside against Worley. And McLeod's got to double down there. I mean, you don't need to hug outside. Edwards can make a three, sure. That's a lesser percentage shot, as now you see Hughes apply some pressure. Florida State breaks the press. Here comes Mills, accelerates, looking to drop it off. And that will be a turnover. You know when you got the nice ride? You and Florida State's lead six at halftime, down to two. And a shrop, Jordan Cornett with you on a Wednesday night in the capital city, Tallahassee. Batman is in the house. Florida State comes out with its tall lineup. Seven foot four, Naheem McLeod. The 6'11 freshman from Majorca, Baba Miller. Worley in there as a 6'6 point guard, along with Cleveland and the shooter, Darren Green. Gerard, Torrance, Edwards, Williams, and Bell, the five for Jim Beheim. Gerard likes this, seven foot four, McLeod on him. A miscommunication, and that allows him to bang down the three. You can tell Warley, Warley wanted to get back there to relieve McLeod, and in that exchange, provided the three-point look. And Syracuse with the lead for the first time in the second half. Gerard's got five threes. Green drops it off for Cleveland. Beautiful passing down low from Florida State. Danny Williams thought about it. Edwards lost it. It's too much length. There's no window there for Torrance to deliver. You got to retreat, dribble, move the basketball. No opportunity presented there. Here's Cleveland. Kicks to Green. He'll launch and connect. It's the third three for Green. He's up to 11. And Florida State's lead back to four. Torrance lost it. Into the long hands of Miller. Worley right around Bell. And the foul is called. It's going to be on Bell. Here's Green again. Edwards snatches the board.
Florida State gets it back. Green, shot fake, open, in and out. Edwards had it, lost it. That opportunity, it doesn't get any better for Florida State. Your best three-point shooter off a turnover, a nice baseline look. But Edwards couldn't corral the rebound. You get a second chance opportunity here once again. FSU can't get bored with Cleveland at the mid post. Too much success has been garnered there. Got to continue to pursue 35 at the logo. We have a timeout. We'll take one, two. Four point game in Tallahassee. 13 19 to go, second half. He's Second part of the second half, you got a couple of young teams, and both at times this season have struggled to close out games. What's critical down the stretch? Well, that's why these are two teams that are, are the only chance to get to the NCAA tournament is auto bids. They don't know how to win. They haven't figured out how to consistently do that. Whether it be untimely turnovers from Syracuse, failure to grab a rebound, defensive letdown, shot selection, and the same with Florida State. Mainly for Florida State, defensive letdowns for that group. That theme has carried the season for them. So as you look at it here, who's going to execute here in these final 13 minutes for two teams that have failed to do that consistently? Florida State turns it over off the inbounds. Mintz to the bucket, and he gets the roll, and that is his first field goal. Just four points on one of six shooting. Over the weekend, we saw it. Florida State had a 17-point lead against Louisville. Cardinals came all the way back, nearly won the game before Florida State prevailed. Syracuse was able to pull away down the stretch against BC. Cleveland again in that high post. Now Mills off the shot fake. Back to Cleveland, working on Bell, and a nifty under move by Matthew Cleveland. Cleveland getting the touch initially. Starts to move the basketball, then provides a driving lane for Mills to dump back to Cleveland. Mids the lob to Edwards, too strong. Williams on the follow. It's the right call. It's the right call from Jamie Lucky. That ball was right in the cylinder. When there was a shot or a pass, the ball was where it was. And again, that was a missed opportunity by Syracuse. You had McLeod up top, Edwards was free, a good pass, and that's an easy yeah, two. And it doesn't matter the intention of it was clearly supposed to be a pass. That pass turned into more of a shot in the cylinder, and it was deterred by Edwards. Right whistle from Jamie. It's the uh, reverse Lorenzo Charles. Yes. A little bit more at stake in that, in that game, too. Slightly. Just a little bit. Cloud was calling for it down low. The shot goes up. Here comes Gerard. It's a bad decision. Clear afterthought for Mills. Gerard misses the runner. Numbers for Florida State. Mills ahead of the pack. Driving on Edwards through the contact. McLeod had it go off his hands. Out of bounds. And it looks like it will stay with Florida State. Last touch, Syracuse. Media timeout with 12 minutes to go in regulation. Anthony, they played Jordan Cornette's Fighting Irish twice. Beat you guys both times, correct? Thank you for that memory. We also shared that memory with GMAC uh, earlier today, one of the great young coaches in this game, although we're not so young anymore. Uh, yeah, uh, Carmelo Anthony still gives me nightmares. He's a top 10 scorer in NBA history. Like, do I need to feel bad about that? It's not like they're going to put a graphic up with you trying to defend them. Or please don't do a stack comparison. You can put up a picture, just no stack comparison. Please. Mintz kicks it ahead to Bell. Fires the three. Offensive rebound, Gerard. That one swatted back. Edwards calling for it. Gerard instead dribbles it out. Edwards needs to have his hands ready on a first catch. And Gerard through traffic. And the whistle is blown. So. You mentioned you went up against Carmelo in 2003. Oh, you're, not you're not really going to do anything here. We're supposed to be friends. We are friends. And again, part of the job description is you go down rabbit holes. So I, I dug up some old box scores. D do you remember how you did? Uh, not well. I never played well against Syracuse. <laughs> do, do you want to know the exact yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Two games, 20 total minutes, zero points. Yeah, man, I, I knew it wasn't good. 
<laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up, but you asked. I had a guard Carmelo. Dude fouled me out. I think he won him. One of the games you played four minutes. So was that a foul trouble game? That was actually sophomore year. That started what would become an extended role for me. Thank you very much for the next two and a half years. I yeah, didn't intend no. for this to become a therapy. I had no business being on the floor against there. And maybe we would have won the games had I played. Those no. were some great battles. <laughs> Green misfires. And you were reminiscing, as you said, with Jerry McNamara in a game at the Carrier Dome in 03. And Notre Dame had to leave late. And McNamara got a three from the corner to win it for Syracuse. Mills up ahead to Green. Back to Green. And the three is good. That's four triples now for Green. He is going to shoot. He is fearless, very much like McNamara, who we were talking about a moment ago. The other way, Mintz through the contact. And this is as important as any theme in this game. Judah Mintz now is hunting, getting into the painted area, and drawing contact. He's also chasing early offense in the open floor. Florida State better get back and protect the goal, because Mintz is now applying pressure full throttle. And apparently, Anish, he scored more points than me in the two contests for Syracuse <laughs> in that one play. Tallahassee, Judah Mintz at the line. We saw this for Mintz Saturday against Boston College. Yeah, didn't play his best ball early on. He got an in-game benching from Jim Beheim. Came off the bench, then played real well down the stretch. Guy's a competitor. He loves the game. Works his tail off, mentally tough, and, and that can be a differentiator in the game nowadays. That's something to watch. Baba Miller and McLeod on the bench. So Florida State with its small lineup on the floor. Small is relative for this program. Worley, air ball. I mean, that looked wrong from the, from the catch. But Worley was committed to what it ended up being, oxygen. Worley came into the game just 6 of 21 from 3. So Syracuse can tie it with a 2, can take the lead with a 3. We can come up on the midpoint of the second half. Mintz over to Gerard. He's been the high man for the Orange tonight. Bell. Offensive rebound, Edwards. Back out to Bell for the lead. And Syracuse up by one. Big time effort from Edwards off the switch. Had an offensive rebounding advantage against the opposition who was forced to block out. Rebound, so he didn't have a putback. Kicks out for three, and that's the best three-point opportunity presented after a miss and an offensive rebound. Ten points for Bell, who only had one field goal in his previous three. Jackson looking for the answer. And a foul against Syracuse. It's going to be on Edwards. Only Edwards second, so you can keep him on the floor and continue to play. But this is, again, a lineup with Florida State where you look at Edwards and say you have to be a difference maker. You have to have plays like that, the offensive rebound kick out. You have to be the force, given the, off given the opposition's lineup currently being smallish. And you wonder if Leonard Hamilton is biding his time as Jackson gets the teardrop until he inserts Miller and McLeod back in. That's a great point. That's absolutely what's happening here. Now Mintz, dauntless, and one. Here he comes. He's so quick. He's unrelenting getting there. Look, a little hesitation dribble. Got Jackson on his hip. Advantage Mintz, and he just kept on proceeding towards the goal. Gives him a look, too. Hey, real stars know how to locate the camera as well. Hat tip to you, Judah. Right, that's a pro move. Mintz has hit three straight from the field after starting 0 for 5. Eight of his 10 have come in the second half. See if they go back to the high post. They do. Mills 
to McLeod, who checked back in. Denied at the rim. Heck of an effort from Edwards. And it'll be Syracuse ball. I think it went off McLeod as he came down. Edwards kept vertical at the rim. Good way to recover back. A little bit of both. And yeah, it came off the left hand of McLeod as he went down. Gerard over Mills and Syracuse extending to a four point lead. The perimeter stars elevating their game down the stretch. You're going to need Gerard. You're going to need Mentz. And they've appeared when they've been most needed. 22 for Gerard. Cleveland gets it back from Jackson. Plenty of time to shoot. Jackson for three. Back iron tapped out. Comes to Gerard. Up ahead to Mintz. He's got a trailer in Bell. Mintz the runner off the window. And a dozen for the freshman Judah Mintz. That is impressive for Mintz. He thought he was going to lob that to Bell. So he didn't have it. Kisses it off the glass. Judah Mintz is starting to announce himself come winning time. Scoring in the open floor, but right here, Judah with the floater. Judah! I'm at the top of my game. Look, I gotta be very clear, Anish. He's one of the best players in the ACC. He's only a freshman. But that ability is undeniable as you watch what he's able to do, how he contorts, controls his body, great touch, and in the open floor, fearless. Why is he fearless, Anish? because that front line from Florida State, when that lineup, big lineup, goes to the bench, i.e. McLeod, that changes everything. Miller as well, when those guys aren't there as rim protectors, guy like Judah Mintz feels like, okay, I can chase mine. Big fella's back. Seven foot four, McLeod is back in the game, so he's hoping to change some of that dribble drive activity. McLeod has played 18 minutes tonight. His ACC high is 22. That came back on the 7th of January against Georgia Tech. Green, he's at four threes tonight. Bell all over him. Shot clock running down. Cleveland falling down. Over to Green, beating the shot clock. And the rebound to Edwards. Mintz pushing. Mintz driving on Jackson to the left hand. And a block called on Florida State. Another chance at a three-point play. Judah Mintz taking over this game. I don't know who's more enjoyable to watch in a conference than him in the open floor. Terquavion Smith is the only one I got off the top. Yeah, that, that'd be a nice challenge. Thank you, Terquavion on line one. But this is Mintz at his best. Look, Terquavion scores from all three levels. Judah's an inside the arc scorer, and in the open floor is when his eyes get big. Worley getting ready to check in for Florida State. And Mills fouled on the drive. It looks like they'll get Benny Williams. To go back to your Ter Terquavion Smith comparison, Terquavion is likely to also pull up from NBA range. I mean, that's in his bag. That's why he's a first-round talent. You know Judah's going to one place. It's the rim. And yet still, he ain't stopping. That's the difference. But this is Syracuse's largest lead of the game. Florida State led by six at the half. Cleveland, less than 10 to shoot. Zone contracting. Worley, his pass picked by Williams. Those passing lanes are never available. Not with the length of Syracuse. Gerard down the lane and able to draw the foul. Florida State failed themselves that last possession by not flashing mid post. They're empty possessions when there's no receiver at that mid post area, right around the ACC logo in the painted area. That's number three on Jalen Worley and Joe Gerard. 85% free throw shooter misses the first. Uh, he's been a lightning rod for this fan base, but there have been games this season where he has carried this team. No question. I mean, he's the focal point offensively, him and obviously Judah Mintz. Again, this group is just such a tough out when those two are playing at a high level together. 
That just hasn't been a consistent thing. Syracuse in the midst of a 16-2 run. Where's the answer for Florida State? And the zone packing in. Shot clock again, down to 10. Cleveland. There's no dribble drive. No real movement. Too easy to defend. Now now it's course. Mills. And a foul on the floor. And Bell just bailed him out overzealous defensively. He had a Florida State team. Dead to rights. Only the fourth team foul. Shot clock resets to 20. Worley's got to get it in. He does. And another foul called against the Orange. That's another one on Bell. So that is four now on Chris Bell, who's played well tonight. Ten points, five rebounds. He will remain in the game. Green from the outside. Tracked down by Benny Williams. Green and roll not there. Edwards setting the high screen for Gerard. The kick. It's Bell. The three. Air ball. McLeod had it, knocked away, and Worley able to retrieve. Florida State looking to end a 10-0 Syracuse run. 16-2 over the last four minutes and 40 seconds. Too congested. Cleveland's got to be the lone guy at that mid-block. Been successful three-fourths of this game. There's Cleveland in the high post, turns around, it's not there. And again, Florida State now working deep into the shot clock against this 2-3 zone. But that's the problem. They're waiting too long to distribute that ball to that mid-post area for Cleveland. It's getting the touch as the shot clock's winding down. That's where the possession must start. And Chandler Jackson getting ready to check in. Benny Williams from the wing. Edwards tried to track it down. It stays inbounds. McLeod up to Worley. Transition opportunity. Mills able to draw the foul. For an offense that's struggling to operate in the half court, you got to pursue runouts off misses. Anytime they're semi available, they need to try to speed up, play a little bit faster because they're stuck in third gear in the half court. The Seminoles have missed their last five from the field. They've gone more than four minutes since scoring, and Caleb Mills with a chance to end that. Second season. In Tallahassee, came over from Houston. Former American Conference preseason player of the year. That was back in 2020. That was the year Houston ended up going to the Final Four, but Mills transferred during that season. Now a press by the Knowles. We come up on five minutes to play. Syracuse at seven and six in the ACC. Florida State, a game under 500 at six and seven. Mitz, the drive, the kick, Bell to the corner. Offensive rebound, Edwards, but they'll get him with the foul. And that's going to be three on Jesse Edwards. Now this is big. Because now Edwards with that push off is going to get Florida State to the line. And now an offense that is completely out of rhythm has gone cold can now try to get some for the rest of this game from the free throw line. That matters. Naheem McLeod, 9 of 23 at the stripe this season. A 1 and 1, and he gets the first. 15 points. 
for Naheem McLeod. That matches a career high. 14 of those came in the first half. He's got seven rebounds to boot. And one out of two. Two possession game, less than five to play. Mintz looking for help. Now it's Edwards. Lost it. Gerard able to save it. Shot clock in single digits. Mills hounding Gerard. Shot clock down to three. Mintz for three. Battle for the rebound. Out of bounds. Last touch, Florida State. It'll stay with Syracuse. They get a new 20. Uh, Anish, Syracuse has to use what's been an advantage for Florida State and make it become a disadvantage. What I mean is, let's see seven foot four Naheem McLeod defend in a pick and roll. Let's see him defend exchanges, and let's see if there's advantage both for Edwards as a dive guy or one of your scoring guards to make McLeod dance on the outside. They're not even pursuing that, which quite frankly is mind boggling to me. And here's one of them. Shot clock again running down. Gerard, no, McLeod the rebound. What's changed in this second half? It's Syracuse's rebounding. They were minus eight at the half, plus 11 in the second half. Cleveland's pass knocked out of bounds. Media timeout. Media timeout. We'll bring you the exciting conclusion. 3.38 going into the tournament a year ago. They earned the, uh, the AQ because they had a run and a path to go win a tournament championship. Virginia Tech did it as a seven seed. Mills in the lane. Edwards had the rebound, lost it out of bounds. Last touch, Florida State. The other part of it, Jordan, with so many teams so close to each other in the ACC standings, those tie breaks become important, especially when you have a game like this, this is the only regular season meeting between these two. And keep in mind, look, Syracuse, it's been a forgettable year to this point. I get it. They've been very close against some of the top teams in this conference. And those close losses, you never know. March gets wacky. But you got to start by winning games like this one to build that rhythm. McLeod on the perimeter. Syracuse tried to go inside. Jackson has it. Here comes Cleveland. Look out! can't have live ball giveaways to allow runouts for Florida State. You simply can't have it. It looks like they've got a wet spot on the logo, so they'll mop it up, stop play. Not so much a turnover, but just a 50-50. Got to protect yourself to eliminate anything easy for Florida State. They were in a scoring drought at one point. That's how Syracuse opened this thing up. But now Florida State a can earn it from the free throw line. B is getting runouts, and that activates a stagnant offense. And now we've got a two possession game. A timeout by Syracuse. Cleveland continues his stellar play. 17 points, 11 rebounds. His 11th double double of the season. Nine of them have come in conference play. He's now in double figures and scoring for an 18th straight game. Jesse Edwards got off to a slow start. He's put up a double-double today. Judah Mintz has been huge in the second half, and while the shooting percentage doesn't bear it out, Darren Green's hit some big threes for Florida State. Yeah, no question. I also love the 11 rebounds from Matthew Cleveland. Uh, that's a big deal. Uh, going back to Syracuse, though, Judah Mintz wins with attacking. If he's not going to get those open floor opportunities, try and get McLeod in a ball screen scenario where it gets him out on McLeod, that quick first step, you get Mintz going back in attack mode. You've got to find a way to get Mintz back to going downhill. Now there he comes, downhill on the drive, and finishes at the rim. You just got to give him those opportunities. That's the path to Syracuse winning here down the stretch and closing this one out. Mintz in attack mode. Mintz is 16 have come in the second half. Now he gets in the passing lane. He's the ACC leader in steals per game. Slow the tempo for the Orange as we come up on two and a half to play. Edwards setting the screen. Now Brown. Back 
to Mitz. Gerard for three. Offensive rebound, Brown. Mintz into the corner for Bell. Lines it up. Too strong. Chase for the rebound, and we get a foul. And let's see who they call it on. It looks like they get Jackson, so that is against Florida State. And it stays with Syracuse with 2.05 to go. Now, here's what I don't like. Mintz, look, you love the vision to swing it to Bell cross court, but you're daring your teammates to take a shot early in the shot clock when all you need to do is run clock and, and use that as your weapon. I would have loved to see Mintz hold on to that ball, not swing it to Bell and invite Bell to take that baseline three. A one and one for Jesse Edwards, 60% free throw shooter, and he gets the first. Now, both of these teams have had their issues at the end of games this season. 2.05 to go, still plenty of time. Big free throws. Three possession game. And the clock begins as Jackson picks it up off the ground. Green, high pass, down low, McLeod. And he'll go to the free throw line. That's a good foul if you're Syracuse. McLeod, way below 500 on the season as a that's, free throw shooter. That's got to be Bell's fifth. Yeah, Bell, Bell that, that's his fifth. Had to foul. Left with no choice, but that'll be the end of his night. Bell is out. Justin Taylor, fellow freshman, will check in. Bell had himself a good, good evening tonight. Double figure score, was active on the backboard, made some timely plays defensively, gave them the lift that he needed to. Six rebounds too, that's what Jim Beheim will look at. He was a non-factor on Saturday, only 11 minutes against BC, and now two huge free throws coming for McLeod. And he missed the first. We told you, entering the game, nine out of 23, and one for three tonight. But look, when you talk about that young core, it's Syracuse. I know you want to live in the present, but when you look ahead to next season, a lot of the important pieces, freshmen for the Syracuse team. And you could say the same about Florida State. The problem is, in college basketball, in this day and age, it's hard to get too far ahead with the player movement we have. Down low, Brown finishes with two hands. It's a nine-point lead. We come up on the final 90 seconds. Cleveland's three, not there. Taylor skies for the board. Tries to dribble out of trouble, and he gets fouled. It'll be a one and one for Justin Taylor, who's made 16 out of 20 at the free throw line. Oh, no question. You, you know, you made mention, Anisha, about you know, how roster changeover has just become the norm. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Syracuse, how they approach their roster going into next season. Florida State is very clear they're going to hit the portal with in a big way, I would imagine. Uh, but again, just understanding this new world order uh, is a big part of it. it. It's any guess what these rosters will look like for the year. I look at Pitt a few years ago when, as freshmen, they brought in Xavier Johnson, Trey McGowan's, and Audis Tony, and you thought, wow, you can dream on this core. All three of them went on to transfer. Oh. Florida State gets two back, 71-64. But you know what Coach Cable did? When it got a great group of guys, the culture in the locker room is strong, bunch of talent, and it's reminiscent of, we talked about 2003. Pitt now looks like 2003 Pitt once again. But they've done it in the 2023 fashion. They've done it with transfers. And they're looking at a double buy currently in Greensboro. Gerard, the three, the dagger. Twenty six points for Joe Girard Cleveland at the other end and Girard corrals the rebound Syracuse by 10. This has been one of the best games Joe Girard has played played off awesome. in a Syracuse uniform five three pointers seven rebounds a couple of assists. He's played under control. The shot selection has been terrific.
He's been wildly efficient because of it. He's taken everything that the defense has given him. He's played like the leader tonight, no question. The extra pass and the punctuation from Jesse Edwards. And what you got tonight was a consistent Gerard, an elevated mitts down the stretch, and a little bit of Edwards as well. That's a winning formula for Syracuse. Judah Mintz will dribble out the clock. Joe Girard lets the final seconds run out, and Syracuse comes to Tallahassee and hangs on for a road win. 76 to 67. The Orange down six at the half. It was the rebounding in the second half and the play of Judah Mintz that got Syracuse the W on the road. Yeah, jo Joe Girard carried the day. Made, it was hunting his from the three-point line, didn't force it, took good care of the basketball. Only a couple turnovers.